Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video again is targeted at those of you who are studying GCSE Geography for AQA, Edexcel, OCR, EDUCAS and WJEC for Geography. And this particular video is going to talk about types of rainfall. Now, as always, there is a link in the description box below if you would also like to access the lesson worksheets in relation to this video and then you have your nice revision notes that you have then created on those structured worksheets. They're completely free so again if you want to check out the description box you will get a direct link there available for those worksheets. So this video is going to focus on types of rainfall and when we think about types of rainfall we're thinking about what we call precipitation and precipitation is a geographical word you will need to become familiar with and when we use the word precipitation we're talking about rain, hail, sleet and snow. Any water that is present in a solid, liquid or a gas that falls from the atmosphere or the sky. So like I said, that includes rain, hail, sleet and snow. Because you should be aware that water is present in the atmosphere in any of those three states. So as a liquid, such as rain, as a solid, such as snow and ice, or as an invisible gas, which we know as water vapor. Now, this particular video is going to focus on the types of rainfall that we can get on our planet. And there are three different types of rainfall. So if you're completing this lesson using the worksheets that are available in the description box below, you will find on those worksheets the three types of rainfall and the names, but also then a box that you're going to draw a diagram in to show that type of rainfall, as well as lots of lines underneath so you can explain step by step how that type of rainfall is created. So we're going to start off by looking at what we call relief rainfall. Now relief rainfall, when we think about the word relief, we're thinking about the, the shape of the land. So this type of rainfall involves some type of hill or mountain type of region. Now if we're thinking about the UK, for this particular example, we could have our mountains as our Pennines, the, the spine of England, if you like, in the UK, which means that we have the, the west coast of England on the screen here. So we could have Liverpool there, for example. And then on the east side of our screen, that is where we would move into the eastern part of England. And obviously, when we're talking about relief rainfall, that is involving this type of mountainous or hill shape. So our Pennines is going to be our example for that. So how does relief rainfall take place then? Well, we start with solar radiation coming down towards our planet and the sun and that solar radiation heating up the water. And in this particular example, if we're thinking about the UK, that would be the Irish Sea that is being heated up there. Now, as we are aware, when water gets warm, it will start to what we call evaporate. It will turn from a liquid into a gas known as water vapor. So we have evaporation taking place because that water has now been heated up by the sun and its solar radiation, that heat energy. Now, as that air, that water vapor, is then traveling through the atmosphere, it will pass over and more towards those mountainous regions, which will force the air to begin to rise. And as it rises, it will cool and condense. It will cool down in temperature and we will get something called condensation taking place. Condensation then means that we get cloud formation. And those clouds and all that water vapour and all those particles will start to join together high in the atmosphere to form clouds when they mix with dust particles as well. And over time, when that water vapour and those dust particles collect together even more, we will get bigger and bigger cloud formation. And eventually, when the cloud becomes too heavy and too intense, and that mountainous region has forced all of this water vapour to cool and to condense very rapidly, we will get precipitation, typically on one side of our hill or mountain. 
when we have enough precipitation taking place, that rain, that hail, that sleet and that snow, the air will begin to descend over the mountain, over to the other side. And it will slightly warm up that air now. It will hold more water vapour at this particular moment in time. And then we will get something known as a rain shadow starting to appear because the area of the mountain is drier on the other side compared to the side that's had precipitation. So overall, that is the process of relief rainfall. And if you're working on the worksheets, you need to have this diagram in the box and then underneath, taking a moment to explain step by step what is happening throughout this whole process to get relief rainfall. Now, if we move on to our second type of rainfall, we call this type of rainfall convectional rainfall. And convectional rainfall occurs um, in a close proximity to the equator because we need that direct sunlight. And the equator is obviously the ideal place for that because it experiences the most intense solar radiation throughout the year. Now, with convectional rainfall, we have the sun again heating up the ground and the water, which then is causing that water to turn from a liquid into a gas through the process of evaporation. Over time, that water vapour will rise into the atmosphere, higher into the atmosphere, and it will begin to cool down and condense, forming condensation. When condensation takes place, again, all that water vapour will start to join together high in the atmosphere with dust particles to form clouds. So we get cooling, condensing air, forming those clouds. We have then those updrafts of those warm air pushing up the water droplets high in the atmosphere. Sometimes they are carried so high that they can freeze to form hail, but we ultimately get our cloud formation there. And eventually, when that cloud becomes very established and very large, we will eventually get precipitation taking place. That rain, that hail, that sleet or that snow. And this often results in very small spells of sunshine, followed by heavy showers, particularly when we're thinking about locations that are on the equator. So again, you need to know a diagram of convectional rainfall, and then underneath, if you're working on the worksheets, you need to explain step by step the process of convectional rainfall. So, moving on to our third and final type of rainfall. This type of rainfall is known as frontal rainfall, and this is very typical um, type of rainfall that we get in the United Kingdom. Now, this type of rainfall involves what we call air masses. Okay, so you need to imagine that we have two large areas of air moving towards each other. So, on the left hand side of the screen, you can see this warm air. And on the right hand side of the screen, you can see this cold air. And they're what we call air masses. Now, for frontal rainfall, eventually these two air masses will meet. And because the colder air mass is actually heavier and what we call denser in geography, it will force the warm air to rise. So that cold air is dense, that warm air is light, and as we know, heat rises, so it forces that air to rise, and that creates a front where these two air masses meet. Now, as that warm air is forced to rise, it will cool and condense, okay, and we will get condensation taking place, and as we know, the minute we get condensation taking place high in the atmosphere, we will then get cloud formation. Now, again, over time, when we have those clouds that are fully established with all this water vapour condensing into droplets, we will eventually get precipitation taking place again as well. That rain, that hail, that sleet and that snow. So again, you need to know a diagram for frontal rainfall and you will also need to explain step by step the process of frontal rainfall and how it happens.
So that concludes this mini lesson today on types of rainfall. I hope you found it useful. Please remember to like and subscribe these videos so that I know you are finding them helpful. Okay, so please do subscribe so that you will get notifications when I do release new videos. But thank you again for watching and I will see you in my next video.